Father, we just thank you for this morning. We will not be overcome with negative emotions, but we recognize the humor in the problems that we face. And that's the right attitude. So we're thankful for that. And uh, we'll work through this and we'll have a good time uh, worshiping and in your word this morning. We praise you for that. We thank you. We're thankful that you're here. You're here because we're here and you indwell us because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so you're here, you're here magnifying. We have extrapolated that number from one to a number of others. And so we just thank you for that. Father, bless uh, the song or two that we'll do and uh, we just lift it up to you. Thank you for your peace in Jesus' name. Right. And, you know, it's, it's kind of good to have uh, <coughs> challenges like I've had this morning, one right after the other, because I decided when I started having trouble, I'm not going to be bothered by it. <laughs> In your face, Satan. All right, so um, I, want, I just want to share some of the notes that I write down as I'm uh, going through scriptures and stuff. And, and I... I can't apologize for, for mentioning uh, probably my chief mentor right now. And that is Curry Blake. And it's because of what he's had to go through to get where he's at. And uh, he was actually started in the direction of the ministry when he lost his first child. Um, that little girl was I can't even say the word. She was born with a tumor on her tongue, and it stuck out of her mouth. And he said himself it was really gross, and they couldn't remove it. And she was about two years old, and she got um, double pneumonia. And they couldn't, uh, they couldn't do anything with it. They couldn't stop it. And um, she passed away. And his testimony was that he, he called some big name uh, healing ministries, and he, he couldn't get anybody on the phone, and one even said, uh, he's busy, he can't come to the phone, and when, and that, that happened on uh, February 13th, and they buried her on, buried her on Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and it's a reminder every year, and you tell Satan, it's a reminder that this ministry is in your face, Satan. Because he determined at that time when he and his wife stood at the grave, they said, no one will ever call us and not get our help. And uh, he gives his phone number out. And uh, for the size of ministry he has, which is worldwide, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And um, his, his chief mentor was uh, Lester Sumrall, uh, another faith healer, an awesome, awesome man of God. It was... Um, he, I forget what year he passed away. So I've I've listened to him uh, a lot, and he he nails it. He was a real man of God. But uh, another quote that uh, that I really liked came from John Wesley. Uh, he used to get some huge crowds in England um, back in his day, and someone asked him, uh, "How do you, how do you attract so many people?" And he said, I set myself on fire, and they come to watch me burn. They come to watch him burn under the fire, the baptism by fire that he had, and uh, the anointing that the Holy Spirit put on him and, and used him to um, start a real a revival in, in that area. And... It's a humbling thing, but it is a truth that a person fully committed, that is all in, can do the same thing. Any one of us. Why can I say that? Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and because of that, the Holy Spirit 
dwells within us and because what's the hope of glory? Christ in us. Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's scripture. And because of that, any one of us can start a revival. Any one of us. And so that, that's an awesome thing. And uh, Don and I just recently received an invitation to go to Pakistan. And uh, Donna specifically, because she, she Facebooks, I don't do that too much. Um, she's been in contact with different ones there and in India and uh, I think in Africa. And so I think, I think the Lord's laying um, some groundwork for us. And uh, that's exciting to look forward to. I am far, far from retirement. I am being refired, not retired. And uh, I'm just uh, starting to come alive. And that's very exciting. Um, a footnote. This is kind of a this is kind of a new a news blurb. Uh, May thirty first is Pentecost. And it's projected, it's even, I think, prophesied without description of what it is, but something really big is supposed to occur this um, Pentecost. So we'll see. We've only got two weeks to wait. <laughs> so I look forward to that, whatever it is. Regardless, it'll be a good Sunday, but I think there's uh, something major coming so where we are in our, in our Christian walk is we need to step up. We need to step up and take our position in Christ. What's our position in Christ? This is one of the positions in Christ right here. But it goes way beyond this room. Our position in Christ is to share the gospel with other people. To the point that we aggressively, with compassion, go into the community and witness to people. With compassion, manifesting the fruits of the Spirit, which I keep mentioning. After the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, uh, goodness, temperance, meekness, faith. The next verse says, against such there is no law. Any person that's not annoyed and that really thinks about being treated with one of those, if we're manifesting the fruit of, of love and gentleness and kindness and that's coming from us, the person that rejects that, yeah, I think is in trouble. <laughs> I think they're in trouble if they can't receive that, that love. And a lot of people, if you ask them, can I pray for you? I would I would think that the, the percentage is way up, probably above 75%. Most people will let you pray for them, and, uh, except in the food line. If you ask them how everything was going in the food line, uh, do you have a prayer need? They said, oh no, but they were in the food line. <laughs> but they didn't need any prayer, right? No. So, yeah, most, most people out there are receptive, and uh, Ready for, ready for some love. The world is ready for some love. One of my favorite new scriptures that, that I've really got locked in my head now is, uh, I think it's uh, Romans 8, 19. Thank you, Lois. You locked that in my head last week. And it says, uh, basically, um, the, the whole, whole creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are waiting for us. And that's the period of time that we're coming into right now. It's already started. The Spirit's already moving. We need to step up into our position in Christ. Because the situation in this, that this country's in today is because the church has only functioned in this position. They've stepped up to that position. Faithful to come to church. Faithful, loving the Lord. 
But guess what? Not loving the world enough to go to them. Me too. Breaks my heart. And I'm like you, when we get on the subject, I share the Lord. But we need to compassionately go and share the word. Walk down the street. Can I talk to you for a minute? A lot of people will stop and listen. So we need to, we need to become aggressive in that. I'll get to the message here pretty soon. <laughs> this caught me. Um, Thursday, uh, in our morning devotions, I started reading in uh, the New Testament portion of our devotions. Uh, the way to read through the Bible, uh, devotional, or the Bible is set up, read through the Bible in a year. That is set up in Old Testament uh, rotating books and uh, sometimes a chapter in Psalms. So, like today was two chapters, so it varies. I don't know how they divided it. Sometimes I just uh, can't hardly figure out what they're doing. But And then we have a short reading in, in Proverbs and uh, New Testament reading. And anyway, I was reading there in uh, I think I think I was in John uh, 8 and 1 and 2. And Jesus was uh, talking. He said, uh, but Jesus Jesus went and he went he went out from where he was he went into the temple and he began to teach and when I read that the Holy Spirit went just like that and went whoa Guess who's preaching this morning? Jesus. He's preaching through me. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Whoa. I wept. Because <laughs> this scene flashed in my mind just like that. And the Holy Spirit said, Yeah, I'll be preaching. That's what he wants to do in our lives. Not everybody from behind the pulpit. But that's possible. But that's what he wants to do with every one of us. He wants to share the word. And the Holy Spirit prompts us. He's our comforter. He'll give us comfort. So we're comfortable doing that. And so in spite of obstacles that we might run into when we, when we go to do that, talk to somebody or something, we can have that peace that passes all understanding. Um, flip back over to the other message. I got a stack of them. So the, the title for this is... Um, The deposit has been made. The deposit has been made. Here's the first deposit. In, uh, you can uh, look in your PowerPoint. This is my PowerPoint this morning. It's all prepared. I can't show you the slide for it, but it's there and it's in your PowerPoint too if you have one. And that's Genesis 126. And it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Deposit number one. 
We are made in the image of God. And he sent us. We're made in the image of God the Father. We're made in the image of Jesus the Son. And we're in the image of the Holy Spirit. And that manifests when we have the peace that passes under all understanding, which comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, right? And the living word comes from more and more my companion, Jesus, the living word. More and more, I'm, I'm back into, and I've told you before, and I'll, I hope I can continue this uh, daily. I just finished locking in Ephesians 3 again. And uh, it's an advantage because I've had it before. Uh, but I, I struggled with it this time because I finally decided I wasn't given enough time. It's kind of dangerous to do. What I used to do is I walked around with my phone and I had Bible Gateway up and I had whatever I was memorizing up and if the light turned red and I had to stop, then I looked down at the scripture and I was driving down the road, I would um, quote it. Excuse me. And so, I might not do that because, well, it's safe here. It wouldn't be safe in Billings. Billings has a, uh, uh, what is it, hands-free? You better not be caught holding the phone because you'll pay a, a pretty good penalty for that. But, um, so deposit one was, um, he, made, he made us in his image. He made us, us in their image in the image of the Godhead. So that was that was the first deposit. And you can do takeoffs on that. You probably will in your head as you think about all the good things in your life. Every one of them is a deposit. Everything good is a deposit from God the Father. Everything bad is trash being thrown at you from the enemy. Um, so in, in Psalm 115, and there's a lot of verses that, that coincide with uh, this subject. The earth has been given to man in Psalm 115. That was a deposit. It's ours. Now we have to contest with the enemy for our dominion. Because God also said to Satan... You'll have you'll have the uh, you'll have dominion in the earth as long as man doesn't come against you in the power of the Holy Spirit in the power of the Godhead. And I don't think anybody would argue with that. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might kill, steal, and destroy wants to steal their soul so that they go to hell. That's the enemy. And he's here, but he has no authority unless we let him have it. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can come against him with the living word, and we can come against him on every point and get the victory. And the victory might not be apparent. The victory that's apparent is if it's a catastrophic situation and we respond to it even in tears but we have peace like the death of our loved ones that happens that's life but we can still get the victory over those situations this is not wrong to mourn everybody mourns uh, some of us I, I don't like going to funerals because I lose it I, I have trouble maintaining when I'm talking about something good. <laughs> you know, when I'm talking about God's blessings, I'm an emotional person. And I, I guess that's not bad. But uh, anyway, uh, we can get the victory in every situation. 
Um, in Luke 4, 6, why don't you turn over there with me if you've got your PowerPoint with you. I like that. I thought of that today when I was having trouble. Everybody's going to have a PowerPoint. In Luke 4, 6, it's a long chapter. Just about one verse there. Well, going back to five, just and the devil, Jesus was talking there, and uh, this is where Satan was tempting the Lord. And in verse six, said, the devil said unto him, "All this power will I give thee." What power? The power that he had in the heavenly realm, going up to a certain point. He he probably doesn't have way out. Um, someone suggested that might be like ninety miles. That's where. Our, atmosphere changes and so anyway he's the prince of the power of the air scripture says that right and so all this power will I give thee trying to tempt Jesus and all the glory of, of uh, all of this for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I will give it and he said I'll give it if you'll worship me and so Satan tempted Jesus and he also tempts us, usually on a, on a daily basis with something, right? He's, he's after us all the time. It's a war. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. And we have to have the full armor of God. And it goes beyond, it goes beyond Ephesians 6. The good instruction there to put on the spiritual armor. But uh, there's a lot of scripture there that are weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, so that we can cast down imaginations and every vain thing, every vain imagination, right? We can cast it down. And, and so uh, scripture, God gave us, Another deposit right here, major deposits, and there are major deposits. Okay, he gave us the, he gave us the earth. He gave us dominion in the earth. He tells us in Genesis to rule over it. He gave us dominion over every every living thing, every every creepy thing, as Pastor Ed said last week. I think it was um, recently. Every creepy thing, every creeping thing. He gave us dominion over everything. And that doesn't mean that you want to walk up in front of the bear and slap it. But uh, it's also been done where a person has rebuked the bear and the bear is gone. So I think it's a matter of, of faith in a lot of situations. I really like this. Second Peter 1 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust of whatever. So all of the precious promises are weapons of our warfare, and we can stand on it, and uh, if you're a mature believer, you know you can stand on it because you have. And you'll continue to do that. If you're a younger person, the trials are coming. So I hope I'm equipping you with the knowledge of where to go to look for help. Go to the Word of God and read it. Read it daily. It's a good habit to get into I shared it before, my brother started me on that when I was about 16, 14, 16 years old. And uh, there's, there's been some slack time, a couple times, when I was in the military, uh, overseas, away from my other devotion partner. And, uh, but once I got out, uh, we got back into the routine of uh, reg regular uh, church attendance. After she got to Germany, then we went to church pretty regularly. That's always been our habit. 
And uh, so we, uh, and I've shared this before, we create our atmosphere in our home. And we love to have Christian music playing. Uh, we listen to all kinds of, of Christian uh, messages during the week. Uh, we read chapters of the Bible during the week in our devotions. I don't, I don't know how many chapters in the different books. Um, it's beyond seven because uh, in the Old Testament they usually are, are into sometimes three different books, not all the total. They might be halfway through one and all of the second one and halfway into the third one. But in a period of a week I, I know that we read at least ten chapters. And... Uh, like today in Psalms was two chapters, so um, you just need to you need to fill your mind. That's one that's one way we, one way we make improvements in our life is by the renewing of our mind. If we fill our mind with God's word, there's less room for things that don't belong there. Okay. Psalm eight six. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. So he made us to have dominion over the works of his hands. We are, we are the hands, we're the feet. We've, you've heard that before. Uh, we're all members of the body and we have different functions, right? And this is my function this, this Sunday. And uh, there's elders and apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. So those are all functions, but there's also, that would be a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, right? All kinds of different categories. And uh, I've, been, I've been in uh, churches where I took care of some janitorial duties a little bit. Uh, I, lo I love to vacuum, so if there's a carpet, I don't mind vacuuming the carpet. It's like mowing the lawn. I don't want to miss a blade of grass. And uh, I, I'm not perfect at it, but you know, I try. And I have fun doing it. I love to cut wood and stack wood and make progress and see the work of my hands. And uh, as I, as I prepared for this, it, it was exciting to me uh, that, that the Lord would let me uh, come and share uh, about the deposits um, that have been, been made for us. So let's talk for, uh, for a minute about um, some of the, what's another major deposit? We got, we got the earth, we were creating God's image, we got the earth, right? We've got dominion over animals and creepy things. Um, he's given us a huge family, major deposit. Don and I have traveled all over the country, and when I was trucking, we'd stop visitors. And we told them that we were um, had been recently we were trucking, but we were recently from Alaska. And uh, a lady spoke up. She said, "We're from in Alaska," and I said. Uh, we're, we taught school out on Nunavak Island in the Bering Sea. There's only one village there. And she said, oh, I'm from McCork. That's the little village, McCork. She says, I'm from McCork. We told her that we were teaching school there. And she said, huh? Isn't it 200? Yeah, it's 200 people. Yeah. And uh, we were teaching some of her uh, nieces and nephews. She was all teary-eyed because she was homesick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that made her, made her more homesick. Um, but the, that's, that's it. For us, that's a huge deposit. I, I love people. So, uh, huge, huge family that we've got worldwide. And we're, I'm looking forward to all the, all the family that I'm going to meet, all the family in the, in the kingdom that I'm going to meet yet in my life. And... Uh, what what maybe what maybe is uh, the biggest, at least right up there, really close to the top, if not the top? What's the biggest deposit? Holy Spirit. 
Salvation. Just Salvation and the Holy Spirit. Just Amen. Amen. What? Just serving Him in general? Having the heart to do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through growth. Maturity. Yeah. Those are all deposits. So um, through this week and even the rest of your life, when you think about something good, relate it to the deposit. And so I don't forget it later this morning as I was uh, looking at another verse I wanted to look up and I went, oh, and I said to myself, uh, actually I guess I told you, um, all these deposits have been made into the bank, which is our life, and guess what? It's an interest bearing account. It, it draws interest. If we're active, you can you can let your money sit in a bank account, and every once in a while, I'll see on my bank account a post. It sh shows a a plus on my account, and I look over, and it's two cents. That's how much my money earned in the bank because it's just sitting there. But if we invest it like Donna's been doing. You can blow the bank away as far as what you can earn, even if you earn two or three percent. That's way beyond what they pay. You can make more money walking through the Walmart parking lot than the interest they pay on your account, on your bank account. It's the same thing with God's deposits into our life. They're nice. They make a comfortable life for us as far as being loved by the family, having a nice place to come to church. But if we don't reach out, it's going to produce the equivalent of, a, of an almost dead bank account that doesn't draw almost any interest. And so we need to take the investment, the deposits that God's put in our life, and we need to get it out into our community even into our country and even into the world. We need to get it out there. We're being built up and uh, we're being equipped. And so I would say another analogy would be to consider your, your Christian life up to this point. You've been going to the university, the eternal, we'll call it EU, eternal, oh, I don't know about EU. Well, we won't talk about Europe, but anyway, eternal university. And uh, so we've been learning, and we've been maturing and growing. I think we're all, except for the young ones, and you're getting there, we're all ready to reach out. We've got enough knowledge, we've got enough head knowledge to reach out there. But it's like a degree, if a doctor goes through all the training that he goes through and he gets into the medical profession and he's going through his, um, he gets a practice and a major portion of his income comes from Medicare and then they, they throw, let's call it bricks, they throw bricks at him and, and they stop some of that money from coming and his income goes down and he has to struggle and fight for a lot, a lot of doctors have left the profession. At that point, their education didn't do them any good. They're still pretty, pretty sharp. You don't become a doctor with, without a lot of knowledge and perseverance and discipline. Um, but when they have to walk away from that and go into a different profession, it's the same thing as us receiving the word, just like today, and not doing anything with it. It's the same thing. So with the word, he has given us an incredible responsibility. I think of Hebrews uh, chapter 2. Um, if you can look there, Hebrews chapter 2. And it was just a short... A short, I think it was just a, a single verse, and a lot of times when I look up a scripture, I'll look above it and below it 
to get the con total context of it. So let me read this. Therefore, this is starting in verse 1, therefore we have to give the more earnest heed. We need to take heed, that is pay attention. And this is, this is a good study, and you can, if you can remember this or write it down, take heed is used 56 times in the Bible. I think it's 27 in the Old Testament, 29 in the New Testament. Take heed. Take heed. Pay attention to what is being said. And so that's a good study, and I might do a message on that at some point. And uh, check out the different translations, like Amplified might give you a little more insight in those. So just uh, studying that. So, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Take heed, pay attention to them, they're important. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? We weren't saved just to be saved. I mean, that's God's love. And uh, hopefully we can pro progress beyond salvation. That salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that, them that heard him. Those that heard him, um, I would propose that whoever wrote Hebrews, and that's still up for grabs, some people have different opinions, uh, whoever wrote this heard Jesus. I believe that. He certainly heard from the Holy Spirit. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come where we speak. But one in a certain place testified saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that you visit him? You made him a little lower than angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands. He did that um, with Jesus. And um, because of that, he, he's placed us in that same category. Verse 8 says, you put all things in subjection under his feet. Under his feet, he and us, so under our feet, right? For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. And all things aren't put under him because we still have to struggle with the enemy. So the enemy is not completely under his feet. Positionally, yes. Experientially, no. Satan's still very active in the world. Experientially, we're seated at the right hand with God the Father. We're there, positionally, but not experientially. We still have to experience life. And uh, to do that without Christ, wow. Don't even want to think about it. Let me go on. This wasn't even in my notes, but this, this is awesome. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than angels for, for the suffering and death, through that crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, so that we wouldn't have to taste the death that leads to eternal separation from God. 2 Corinthians 14 uh, 5, 14 through 18. Okay. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge. And if one died, Jesus, he died for all, then we're all dead. Everyone was dead. And the scripture also says in another place, uh, those that don't know Christ are dead already. Spiritually. Until they come to salvation. 
they're dead already because if they don't find Christ, they're going to remain dead. They're just going to go um, into eternity separated from God. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. We don't, we shouldn't live unto ourselves, but unto him which died for us and rose again. That is, as it was spoken, perhaps the chief, the chief, in fact I would say it is, the chief deposit that's been made into our life. The first one, he did give us life. He gave us dominion over the earth, right? Over animals and such. But the major deposit came later. It's just like in our lives, when you start putting money in the bank, it's usually not very much. And as you grow, and as you become more successful, you get promotions, you get more money, you get more money put in the bank, same with our life. Uh, we got life first, and then, and then the major deposit was made later in our life when we got salvation. Okay? Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, we're talking about at that time, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more, because he wasn't with him anymore. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And that's, that's the, the, the major deposit has been made in our life so that we can become ministers of reconciliation. We don't have to carry the tag of pastor, but we're all called every Christian is called by God to minister to people. And it's the ministry of reconciliation, whether it's whether it's healing, whether it's praying for somebody leading them to the Lord, whether it's having a listening ear and helping to reconcile their heart back to Christ, you know, comforting them. Reconciliation. A lot of different categories and stringers on that. So, I haven't timed this. I'm, I'm kind of, I've got many, many scriptures, so I'm, I'm going to jump, uh, I'm going to jump to the one that I want to point out. Matthew 28, right? 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is Jesus. He's saying, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all <coughs> things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That verse <clears throat> was not written to just the apostles of that time. It was written to everyone. God's word, even though at that time was directed to them, this is, this is the textbook. This is a textbook for the major class in your life. This is where you're going to get your degree, right here. And you don't need a piece of paper from a university. You need God's approval. You need God's approval. His stamp. I would rather have his stamp of approval than a piece of paper from a university. Knowing that I pleased God. I've got the other. I would rather have this. I would rather please God. And uh, so my quest is um, continue to do this. And uh, I shared earlier, the Lord's opening doors up for
for us to do that. It's, it's a coming thing. It's in our near future. And uh, we're excited about that. And I've already been able to share the word in two foreign countries. And that's exciting. And uh, who knows how many? Who knows how many? I don't. I hope it's many. I hope it's many. I love people. I love the different cultures. I love foreign languages. And uh, so my, my desire is as I, as I study his word and I, as I listen to different, um, I would call them all mentors, some more strongly than others, but uh, every one of us, it brings, it brings this to focus. Every one of us is a mentor. Hopefully, a good mentor. If, if we can manifest the fruits of the Spirit to other people, then we're a good mentor. And we can help other people uh, step up. And if somebody is really nailing it on the Christian walk, and we see them, for me, I want to be like them. Because I see Christ in, in somebody. Because I see Christ in somebody, I want to mirror what they're doing because they're mirroring Christ. And so, um, I, I would just challenge you with um, just thinking about all the good things in your lives and the deposits that God has put into your life into your bank account and uh, keep in mind that it is bearing interest and you want what he is depositing into your life to bear fruit and uh, to touch other lives so father we just thank you for your word today and uh, the treasure chest of the bible the precious promises that we mentioned lord and we just pray that you'd help us to be diligent to study your word, to show ourselves approved. 2 Timothy 2.15, show ourselves, study, show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to do that. And uh, in chapter 3, Verses 16 and 17. The word of God is given by inspiration for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, the woman of God would be thoroughly furnished and to have a good work. And so Lord, we pray that you'd help us to be diligent in that sacrifice our time sacrifice the time that we misuse to study your word to be built up lord help us to be strong and have strong input into our community and on a national scale when we uh, hopefully elect uh, officials that will be faithful in serving the people that put them there so we ask your blessing on on uh, the word today help us to remember it, and we ask a blessing for the future week, uh, the coming week. And so I just thank you for the privilege of being able to come again to church and fellowship. We thank you for that, and we ask these things in Jesus' name.